After what felt like a month, Fear and Beyond Journey's End is back. <laughs> I'm so happy to have it back. Uh, what a wholesome episode to return on. I, I honestly was feeling like next episode was going to be signed parts and they go directly to the Academy. But nope, it looks like we're going to have like a nice little wholesome moment to once again see how childish Fern is. See a little bit of that motherly love. And yes... Sign, finally saying the thing that we all are yelling out loud as we watch this series. Just start dating already. <laughs> Such a fun little, like, frustration moment in there. But, yeah, I, I have to say this episode was really great. There was probably a little bit of a side of me that almost felt like we were kind of retreading old stuff with the whole thing of Sign kind of wondering why Ferrin kind of brought her in and has been kind of leading him into this adventure. But, Honestly, it's something that we had to establish for Sign's side. We we know from Ferrin's side why she was doing it, but from, from Sign's side, he didn't really get that yet. And that was kind of nice to sort of solidify that. But yes, opening up this episode, getting a continuation of what we had before, Sign basically trying to decide if he wants to part ways or not. I do like there was so much emphasis on this episode, and it almost got me at the very end when Sign parts ways with them. I was like, Please don't have him cry. <laughs> Please don't have this dude cry. It's not going to work. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit me bad. <laughs> but no, it really kind of showing how much he's enjoyed this journey. It, I like that the very end, he kind of says, you know, it's very quiet journey alone now. Because it's something that he's grown to like. Not that he didn't want to connect with them. It's just it kind of happened. And I do appreciate that they put a lot of emphasis on the enjoyment that he had with them. And it was kind of sad to have that little moment where he realizes, wait, I haven't really been spending time with them. Even though we're about to part ways. I, I think he already knew. I, I, I think he honestly knew that, you know, look, this is my journey. It was to go find my friend. I'm going to go find my friend. But it was a it was a nice little kind of add into it. And it can, again, kind of emphasizes the idea of what he sort of brings to the group, which is, yes, like a parental figure. There is some emphasis in this episode, episode 17, of how Ferrin has to sort of step up. And I don't think it's ever going to be the case. It's just, Ferrin is just different. There is sort of a aspect here, of course, that Fern and Stark are still children, and they need sort of somebody to guide them. And Sign, the moment he joined, all the way up until the end, is that parental figure, the one that's mediating for them. Fer Ferrin kind of points it out as it's a priest thing, they mediate, but it's really kind of more of a grown-up thing. And again, like I've said before, it's more of an aspect that he's human and understands that timeline and that maturity, whereas Ferrin has, is an elf, doesn't really know sort of the norms of somebody being raised and going through their life and growing up. I think it's something that she's learning, but it is sort of, again, an emphasis that how what he brought to the group in sort of correcting the issues that these children have and showing them that, look, it's simple. Just apologize, move on. You know, you don't hate each other. So just kind of apologize and move on. So yeah, that was great. But yes, <laughs> obviously the trigger of that whole thing was... um Yes, the continued teasing of the Fern x Stark thing, which is how cold it is, and they're touching each other's faces and all that kind of stuff. It was so it was so childlike, but it was like that first moment where it's like, oh, let me let me feel your hand again. The very obliviously innocent Stark that I absolutely love, and the idea of him just walking up there and grabbing her hands and going, oh yeah, that's really cold, and then her kind of being childish as well by slapping him on the, the cheek with her cold hand. And he's just like, gosh, these kids. <laughs> Seishun, <laughs> the youth. <laughs> and then, yes, that coming in later on when they have a fight and he comes in there and he mediates and finds out that, yes, Stark came in from the cold, wanted to get her back for it and put his hand on her cheek and it flustered her. Now, here was the odd thing. And it's kind of like one of those question marks of like, was that what the intent was? Because, yes, the assumption is that he caught Fern off guard she got all pouty, and she didn't like it. She was being childish. She, he got me back, and I'm going to get him by being pouty. But no, it emphasized an idea that it was more the fact that Stark scared her, which I do agree with. There is this idea that, okay, here is a childish fun thing. The two of them kind of, you know, messing with each other by slapping each other with cold hands. And then it kind of turns into something different. He's going, okay, I'm going to get her back. I'm going to put my hand on her cheek. And yeah, there is an aspect of her going, you know, look, crap, he got me. I'm going to get him back again. But there is still that element of fragility. The idea of not that Fern is weak. She's powerful. <laughs> she's wrecked, wrecked a demon like crazy. Like she's super powerful. But in that moment, she was, her guard was down. 
And he took advantage of that, and it scared her. And add on to the fact that, yes, Stark is physically strong. He is a very physically strong person. And she says that when he put his hand on my shoulder, it was, it terrified her. What does this connect to? Eisen. Eisen had the same fear. He was afraid of Stark because he was powerful. And that's something that led him to striking out at Stark. Fern's getting, I think right here, they're emphasizing the idea that Fern is getting that same feeling. He terrified me. He scared me. And it's a sad reality and the idea that Stark isn't a bad person. He's, he's too pure. He is so super too pure, too pure. But in that moment, he doesn't realize what he's doing is striking fear upon Fern because he doesn't know his own strength. And I'm wondering if that'll be a, a story beat going down the line is this idea of him not realizing his own strength. I'm not sure that the, the story will go in that direction. I don't really have a sense that this is what that writer would do, but they could. But I, I do like the idea that, like I said, it, it turns from something funny and cute and we're all shipping it to something that is actually technically a serious topic here. Be more gentle with me. I'm letting my guard down. Normally, I'll blast the heck out of anybody that scares me like that. But I'm letting my guard down because it's you, Stark. Don't make me afraid of you. And I, which is me really drawing some major conclusions there. But it's it's where my mindset goes, which was, again, <laughs> it kind of sucks to go from something that's cute to something that's kind of serious. But it is something that he has to know. And yeah, yeah. I mean, after seeing him slamming the cup down, just start dating already. And <laughs> fair and so they're like, crap, <laughs> just a little shock face. Uh, it was too good. I, I I absolutely loved it. So that was great. But yes, this turns into the conversation between Sine and Farron. Like I mentioned earlier, this idea of Sine really kind of questioning Farron, why me? Why did you why did you grab me and pull me on this adventure? And yes, this is calling back to that original meeting, which we talked about, which is the idea that Farron seen Sine was the same as her. I hate I I'm I hate people that are like me. I was stuck over here, and then Himmel came by and brought me in. He brought me on this adventure and showed me these joys. And I was doing the same to you. I was giving you that reason for leaving your town. And hopefully you found something good. Yeah, he realized, yes, I found something good. Um, really cute seeing him all saying that. <laughs> Here, I'll be your reason. Come with me. I'll be your reason. I'm going to show you that joy. And yes, that we find out that, yeah, that's what Himmel kind of showed her is those joys. So really cute. And like I said, at least giving that emphasis upon sign and I, th I think that's what made it more difficult for him to part ways is, yes, he realized he had a lot of fun. Seeing all those little memories of all them together, doing different things, Fern seeking advice from him, hanging out with Stark. It was just, it was super cute. So really made the parting ways uh, kind of harsh, <laughs> but uh, it didn't hit me as much. And like I said, it, it would probably have really tore me up if, if he started crying, but it was like a, a very bittersweet smile at the end, which I really liked. But yes, because Sign leaves, obviously now suddenly everybody gets sick. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. The moment that he leaves, somebody gets sick and they have a little bit of a spout. Literally the first half is this is what Sign brings to the group. The second half of this episode is this is when Sign isn't in the group anymore. <laughs> so somebody gets sick. There's a little bit of a, a beef that comes up. Fern getting sick. I thought both of them got sick and it was going to be like a, maybe a curse or something they ate nearby, but it looks like it was just Fern and Farron didn't want to wake up. It's like when Stark comes back, he's like, wait, they're not up yet. That's odd. And I'm like, no, it's not odd for Farron. It is odd for Fern <laughs> because Fern's, Fern's sick and then Stark has to wake up Farron. I love that. <laughs> wake up. 12 more hours. No, y you need to get up. Fern's sick. Mumble, mumble, And they grab the, the face. Yama <laughs> The cute little Farron. I want to sleep. Leave me alone moment. But yeah, this is cool because we find out that Sign actually left them a book that has a bunch of medical stuff in it, which... Again, calls back to the previous discussion that Stark had with Farron on the idea of the scriptures and how, you know, only chosen people have the scriptures and they know how to read them and everything. And Farron, this was kind of one of those, I kind of assumed that. <laughs> Farron's like, yeah, I have one. <laughs> again, I, I assumed over thousands of years, she probably got one of those books. And again, it was indicated by the fact that she was able to use the spells. She just didn't know what it did. So yes, she's always had the scripture. She She's read it. She knows how to use it. She just doesn't know how to read it. And yes, based on the fact that she's used it before on um, Stark, the assumption is that she knows how to read some of it. But yeah, this is the, the really cute moment with Fern and the idea of Farron trying to comfort Fern, holding her hand, and this upsetting Fern because Stark's standing right there. <laughs> like Stark says later on, I like how Stark kind of consoles Farron because obviously Fern being embarrassed and pulling away from Farron it, it kind of hurts a little bit. Like you're, you're trying to comfort somebody and they pull away. And I like how Stark is sort of 
comforting Freyra in the idea of, look, I think it's just because I was there. She was embarrassed. People don't want other people to see them being babied. And so, yes, obviously she pulled away. So it's kind of a nice little thing to tell Freyra. And hey, look, I think she did like that. It's just because I was there. But yeah, we get into why Fern was holding Fern's hand. And yeah, it, yes, technically she mentioned the fact that Fern's hurting. And I used I always do this for her. And it seems to make it better for her. And then it gets into why exactly she started doing that, which is a big shock to everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's either going to be Himmel or it's going to be her master. And so, yes, it's Himmel. Himmel used to hold her hand just to kind of comfort her. It was kind of cute to see that how they were all flustered over the fact that she was you know, sick and they don't know what to do. It sort of gave me a thought process there that there might be a possibility that they didn't know how to handle maybe possibly an elf when they're sick because yes, they had Heiter in the party. You'd assume that Heiter can cure. Maybe colds can't be cured. Maybe it's only curses and diseases that they can cure. Maybe a common cold, you have to use regular medicine. But I thought it was odd that Heiter didn't just cure her and they had to go out and get medicine to do that. So maybe... Possibly there's a chance there that because she's an elf, that's the case. Because Himmel specifically says they they always kind of get frantic and they're always kind of concerned whenever she is ill. Not saying whenever anybody is ill, when she is ill. So I thought that was kind of an odd thing to sort of go out of the way to do, which it makes sense to the, the story beat here and the idea of comforting somebody when they're ill. But additionally, I like how much emphasis in this section is on the idea of age doesn't really matter when it comes to being comforted. If you are sick... Just because you're an adult, and they're kind of pointing out how Fern, she's two years and she's going to be fully grown. She is an adult at this point. And so there is this kind of thing of, well, Fern doesn't like to be treated like a child anymore. And Fern, who is way, way older than Himmel, was being comforted by him. It, it doesn't necessarily matter what your age is. It's, you still, you can still comfort somebody when they're hurting. So it was, it was kind of a little sweet little message in there. They also mentioned why Himmel did that, and that was because apparently his... His mother, who died when he was younger, used to do that same thing, and it was strangely calming. So, kind of a little insight into Himmel that he's that he's lost his mother. But yeah, the icicle cherry blossom tree was absolutely beautiful. Fern points out that it was probably one of her favorite that blooms in winter. It looked really gorgeous. But I think overall, this later segment, what I liked most about it was really kind of having Fern being sort of a mother figure. Her kind of taking care of, of Fern. How, again, Stark was sort of trying to ease her mind in the idea of why Fern pulled away. It seemed like Stark was seeing Farron as sort of a mother figure to Fern. And so having that moment where Farron felt a little bit rejected, or at least he thought that she was, and him trying to comfort her, comfort her in that, it was kind of a sweet little moment to kind of see how much Farron really cares for Fern. And I think that's a nice little carryover from everything that Sine sort of brought to the group, which is this idea of a parental figure, somebody that is guiding both Fern and Stark, who are still children. Anyhow, that is episode 17 of Fair and Beyond Journeys In. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure that like button down below. Comment. Let me know the thought of the episode. Looking forward to next week. I don't know. Maybe we'll get the Academy stuff going in next week. <laughs> Seeing a lot of characters in the PV and the OP. Oh, that by the way, yeah, the OP and the ED. I, I do really like the ED, first of all. Yes, it is the same song, but a different rendition. I almost was thinking the OP and the ED were going to be a lot more calmer this time around. A lot less bombastic. But yeah, technically half of the ED does ramp up again. But it was a nice little kind of actually take of it. I I think I kind of prefer the second one more, but the first one's a lot more consistent. The first ED was a lot more consistent in its loudness and its energy that's in it. But they're both fantastic. The OP, I will admit, fits the show a lot more. I, I, I've i mentioned that before where I think the OP, the first OP for Ferran doesn't match the series. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's very bombastic and epic at times. But it just has too much, it had too much of like a, an energy, like an electronic energy to it that I didn't really care much for, for the theme of the show. So yeah, having this new OP, a lot more fitting. I think it's very beautiful. So it's like, to listen to on a regular basis, I think they're both awesome. But for the show itself, I think the second OP is a lot more fitting. But I enjoy the mo both of them. A lot more visuals in the OP this time around, and... Yes, uh, implying a lot of things and showing a lot of characters that I'm excited to see. So we'll we'll see where that goes. There's there's the, there's still that person that keeps popping up. It popped up in the first OP, I believe, and is popping up in this one that I'm really curious about. That I'm assuming is going to be the Demon Lord, but we'll see. We'll see. But anyhow, again, that's my thoughts on this episode. If you guys enjoyed this video, as always, if you did, make sure that like button down below, comment, let me know what's the thought of the episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button so you get my content on news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime is pretty much here. Additionally, I'll be doing first impressions of all the shows of the winter 2023. 
2023-2024 anime season. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, tips link, super thanks, membership button down below. Greatly appreciate it, it does, and y'all take care.